This is Rob Tubber for Boxing News. Delighted to be joined by the still WBO Cruiserweight Champion of the World, Chris Billum-Smith. It is 5.27 in the AM, Chris. It's a late one even for us. How you doing? Yeah, very good. Just watched Tank perform, uh, obviously, with you then. Uh, yeah, I'm all, I'm all good. I'm tired, uh, it's fair to say, but uh, I'm very well, thank you. What did you make of Javante Davis's performance before we talk about yourself? Yeah, I mean, Frank might have had some success, but a lot of people have success against Tank. He's just a beast and he just keeps you mentally occupied and then just finds finds those shots and every time he punches, he punches with absolute venom and uh, very accurate, uh, great finish. From one devastating world championship victory to a probably less devastating world championship victory, but a world championship victory all the same. You were successfully defending your WBO Cruiserweight Championship against Richard Riakpour. What did you make of the fight? Uh, yeah, um, uh, it probably wasn't the most pleasing on the eye, but just a, a disciplined performance. I just had to do what I had to do tonight. I wasn't going to take any risks against someone like Richard. Um, there will be fights in the future where um, against bigger punches where you have to take more risks, but because of the, the work rate and the way uh, Richard fights, I sort of got my shots off, dipped down and stayed safe, and then... Most of the time, he was lean, sorry, leaning on me, and um, yeah, and then you're trying to find room and stuff. But yeah, um, ple very pleased and with how I followed out the game plan. Something I spoke to your trainer Shane McGuigan about, um, kind of the words that we we generally associate with yourself over recent years: exciting, durable, relentless, all of those things. But tonight, a different side of you. I felt more disciplined, more intelligent, more methodical. Would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think I don't think I was wasn't very ag I was aggressive in, in a sense, but the sport's aggressive. <laughs> but um, not not my usual self. Not wasn't going big. Everything was about speed tonight, um, and being safe, being disciplined, um, and yeah, not 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 that exciting tonight to be honest. But very much about getting getting the win um, and and staying safe and doing it as easy as I could. I said similar to Shane um, that, you know, it wasn't the win at Bournemouth, which is, of course, something that's very, very special for you, something diff difficult, impossible even to replicate. But there was a, a big outpouring of emotion from yourself in the corner all week. You know, we, we heard about Richard Reactful's punching power. You were quite a sizable underdog despite being a defending world champion. Did that just add to it? Did that just make things a little all that more sweeter for you? Yeah, absolutely. People did the same and last stadium fight I had I was a three to one underdog then I think it was a two to one underdog this time um look I'm, I might not be the most technically gifted and that you know boxing beautiful boxing skill and all that but I know how to fight and I know how to fight in more way than one more ways than one and uh I'm, I'm a quiet guy out off the camera and a lot of time the odds can be done because of what's said on camera and what people say about punch power, but this game's so much more than punch power. And it's not like I don't have punch power myself, you know. Um, I can hurt anyone in the world. Uh, definitely, you know, Richard definitely uh, put a, you know, a tribute to my power, I think, in terms of respect it. Um, and yeah, and, uh, you know, the all the doubts and I love it. <laughs> uh, you, you love it. I'm, I'm never one like, oh, that's for all the haters or anything like that. People have got their opinions and they rightly so. Like, I get it. They don't see me every day in the gym. They don't see the, all they see is the Masternick fight realistically. So they'll go look back, look at that and go, oh, he's getting beat. If he lets Richard hit him like that, um, then it's all over. But I didn't let Lawrence hit me as much as Masternick and stuff. I obviously got hit a bit by Lawrence, but you just, yeah, there's a certain thing for, you just got to adjust to each fight and, and that's what I do. Obviously, I appreciate the uh, the first fight was quite a, a ways away now in the rear view mirror and, and much water has gone under the bridge since then. But how was Richard the dif uh, different? How was he the same? And likewise yourself uh, than you were in the first fight? Yeah, a lot of people asked me how I thought it was going to go and if it'd be similar to the first fight. And I was like, yeah, it will, I think, but I'll be a lot more calm and a lot more disciplined and uh, you know and uh I, I feel like that's kind of how it went because i was winning the early rounds very well in the first fight just too erratic and things like that i just slowed my feet down didn't try and move away from his his power or anything like that um and pull out or anything just kept taking the space and 
being comfortable in that range and that's something that I've really learned over the last few years of getting comfortable in, in range and against power punches most people don't think is a yeah they think is a bad idea but just knowing what to do in those situations that's where, where Shane comes in and tells me you know where my head's got to be what I've got to do when they do this and this shot and after this position or this punch where to go and stuff like that so um yeah I mean Shane's a, a master at that but yeah I mean the first fight was was similar it was in that sense like I said Richard's rawness back then gave him success I was obviously very raw as well and I think he he was still had a little bit of that tonight but he's very a lot more cuter and stuff like he's almost looking for the perfect shot but where my head was moving the whole time I was adjusting the height head checks changing the distance he couldn't he couldn't find that so um yeah I think um people are saying Richard didn't perform that well but it's probably because I, I took that away from him as well uh, mentioned earlier much was made about Richard's punch and power going into this fight uh, did he ever hurt you at all did you feel his power tonight no no genuinely didn't um I think one of the rounds ninth I think uh he had a little burst but nothing buzzed me as you can see as once I sort of just got my shape back I think I, I landed decent shot um a couple of decent shots and stuff like that so it was nothing nothing bothered me um I'm, it's not to say these people can't punch or and it's not to say that I've got a phenomenal chin I've got a good chin and I'm aware of that but it's still you when you can see the shots you, you can take a little bit of sting out of the shots um just ride them or they just miss or they don't hit it was clean and I don't think I ever got hit fully fully flush tonight I was always a couple of them maybe got caught through a glove or but nothing was clean I've been hit much cleaner um by Masterneck and by Tommy McCarthy fights and, and things like that and um, you know but no disrespect to those guys but they're not as big a puncher as Richard so in terms of what he does to other people so um, I just had to I had, I had respect for that and saw that as the only way of him beating me was landing something Aside from the game plan obviously a well executed game plan um, devised by, by yourself and your trainer Shane how much do you feel that your experience it was talked about a lot in the build up to this fight your experience and particularly and most notably experience in fighting in a football stadium it's not something that most fighters ever really get the opportunity to do once much less twice in a year how integral do you feel like that was? Yeah I mean the, uh, the experience of a football stadium is, is was probably a, uh, was was nice but the experience for me is <laughs> all the fights I've had and then to get through those fights, I had the experience of being around people in the gym, you know, Josh Taylor, George Groves, Luke Campbell, Lawrence O'Coley, and all the experience I gained from seeing their camps or traveling away with them and seeing how they do things and what works. And then being around the team on fight week and all that big fight hype, I always just felt like, oh, cool, I can't wait for this for me. And had it this week. I've really, really enjoyed this week, um, this fight week and just tried to embrace everything and, um, just enjoy enjoy the moment, enjoy the journey, and yeah, I mean the the, the experience of <coughs> of the football stadium obviously helped, and then but you know, I think for me it was the the gradual progression of opponents is the biggest experience, and the not so good performances or uh, not f getting through all the the tough times, whether you're know, on fight week or not a long camp or not feeling great for one fight or bad performance still coming out winning all those things are experienced and it's overcoming things like anything overcoming a a problem is what what gives you confidence and and, and is a great experience one or two eyebrows raised at the scorecards um 116 111 and 115 112 times two uh, did you feel that you won the fight wider than that yeah i felt very much in control in the fight um the, the boys at the end of the fight was i think i, I think after the first round i was like oh, he's got he's got the first round and then I don't think I lost a round for f f any of the first five. I kind of stopped, <coughs> excuse me, counting after that. But I can't see how he won, you know, men many of the rounds. I felt eight, obviously I wasn't scoring it round by round. But I was like, I've won at least eight rounds here, at least eight. And that's been very generous to him is what it felt like. Boys, I think, have me ten two up. But a lot of my work gets missed again against Richard. It does get it does get missed because I do a lot of short shots on the inside. Um, there's a reason he's not just able to perform or has a bad performance because I'm busting him up on the inside, and that's what I do with a lot of fighters. But all his success comes from long and 
you see his shots more and even if they're not hitting me uh, you know I might be catching them with the gloves and they'll be knocking me knocking me off balance a bit but it's not really a scoring blow um because just take the st sting out of it by moving back as well <coughs> but yeah um I do a lot of very very good work on the inside short uppercuts good body shots short right hooks short left hooks you know all, all that sort of stuff and a lot of people don't realize that until they get in there and uh, very similar to the first fight I think that's why I didn't get scored a lot a huge amount of rounds by some of the judges on on the first fight um because because I was doing that work in there and um yeah but that's uh, maybe something I've got to work on because you know, it might be come to a fight one day where I've got to, I can't just land those shots because the scorecards will be uh, affected by it. So I've got to add that to my game. Were you surprised that you weren't able to, to break him down and get him out of there? I know you, you didn't necessarily... You, you, I don't want to say you seemed content in winning the fight the way you were, but while it was all going the way that you needed to, there didn't seem the, the impetus to kind of change anything. No, that's the thing. I just felt very comfortable in what I was doing. Pick up round by round. I was like, I'm not going to go for the stoppage. If it comes in, great. Um, I definitely, you know, hurt him with a couple of shots, but he's a tough, tough man, and it would have taken a big sustained attack. <coughs> and to find the right shots, you've got to put myself in a vulnerable position. And I just wasn't taking any risks tonight. It was all about getting the win uh, and moving on. We spoke before this fight uh, during the week about essentially carving out your own legacy. We've we've been very blessed in this country over the last few years, certainly in the cruiserweight division and kind of even longer so in the super middleweight division um this era now of Coley, Reactpour, Billum Smith, Chamberlain do you feel that you've done what's required to establish yourself as the number one? I think so yeah I don't think you know we've all boxed each other in one way shape or form I think the only person who would have an argument is, is Jack Massey because he's only lost to Richard and then obviously just beat Isaac but um he hasn't boxed anyone else of much note you know disrespect but you know fair, fair play to him um but I, I've, I've got such a an opportunity now to move on for, for much bigger fights and uh I think Jack would need a few more to be ready for I'm not going to get any uh you know recognition for beating Jack next for example um and it'd be a, a, a pointless fight and then he'd have the excuses oh, I've, I've taken it too soon because I haven't had enough um, it, you know he'd have that excuse in, in the pocket or people would have that excuse for him um, and yeah look it's that's how, that's how I feel I feel like <coughs> he'd be the only one but with all due respect hasn't had you know, he's had one good win at domestic level really and um, I've had a really good long run Richard's boxed a few Lawrence has boxed a few and it was kind of us three left at the top, and then I've gone on and, and beaten those two guys who, um, you know, I, I really respected and, and knew I'd really have to be on my game to, to beat them both. And, you know, fortunately enough, I have been. Uh, last week, a couple from me. I uh, do appreciate time, particularly uh, is yeah, 20 to 6 in the morning. Um, uh, a lot was uh, discussed coming into this fight. Jaya Pattaya in Saudi Arabia, Noel Gavor slash Bacalian, depending on what way you want to go about it, um, wherever Don King has a snooker hall or pool hall or somewhere in miami um but the one that you spoke about very very quickly afterwards was a certain gilberto zurdo ramirez las vegas here we come i think words to the effect is that top of the cbs shopping list next yeah it is and look people might <coughs> people might say that i'm dodging up a tire because he's like you know seen as the, the number one in the division and you know rightly so he beat he beat breedis um so i think it's between me and him one and two, but um, I wanted to fight him originally when I was meant to fight Lawrence, and th there's some contractual in, uh, issues there with I think his, from his side of thing management and whatnot. Um, but for me now, it's just about making memories and, and, and making uh, looking back on a career which is uh, I really enjoyed. And you know, America, everyone wants to fight in America. And then after that, you know, that my next two fights, if I had had you know. The a magic wand would be Bizardo in America, and then Upper Tire wherever, and um, I've, I'd love that. That'd be be amazing. Um, Zerdo is by by no means an easy fight. A uh, very talented fighter. Only lost to Bivol. <coughs> Had a great win against um, Gulamirian. Um and then yeah, uh, but obviously he's stateside and. 
when you're you're a kid you want to fight in your team's football stadium and then you get to do that and someone else's football stadium and then where do you go from there so uh dream big dreams as uh, as i learned from the film sing but um yeah yeah that that's it for me i just want to want to make memories you know and uh i think i'll we'll fight out there and then and then up a tie would, would be fantastic just a word on your trainer shane mcgrigan uh sat here about what well, to be fair it's about four hours ago now um and, and i spoke to him really about kind of the first fight and and you all know and, and shane kind of said in the interview that you know there was a lot of things going on in his life at the time um, and a lot of things that, you know, he wanted to go and write for you really is what he said. You know, he didn't feel like he'd necessarily given you what he, he could have given you in that first fight. It's not something that you, you really hear from Shane, that side of thing too often. Um, but if you can just sum up what this means, not only for yourself, of course, and he was very kind of pointed to make sure that it was, it was very much about you. But going on that journey, obviously it's, it's longer than five years, but from fight one, to fight too. What can you say about the work that you've done with Shane and and how you've progressed since that first fight? Yeah, I mean, first I you didn't do anything wrong in the first fight. I <coughs> it was just the lack of experience in my half that probably didn't get me over the line fully. But we still felt like I'd won the fight. But um, yeah, that that was that. But so he had a uh, a lot of issues at the time with his, his Nika was ill and passed away three days after the first fight. So. Um, I thought about that a lot this week, actually, um, about Nika and the timing of the fight and and stuff like that. And then he said it to me in the ring, so it sort of gave me the uh, the okay to de- dedicate it to Nika. And uh, I remember after the, the first fight, um, Blaine, Shane's brother, said to cause he said he spoke to me on the Monday, uh, which would have been maybe the day before she passed away, or maybe even that night. She messaged him or something. And, he said, oh, I spoke to Neeks and she asked how it went and she, she said, oh, yeah, he, he felt, we felt Chris did enough and she was like, fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> and that sums up that Neeks, she's like, oh, fuck him. Um, tell Chris well done or whatever. So, uh, yeah, no, um, it, it was nice to be able to do that tonight and, and Shane didn't do anything wrong in that first fight. But, yeah, our relationship is um, really special and the work that's gone in from that first fight, Craig Glover fight, um, you know, it was a, was a big, big fight for us and um, a big turning point in that sort of belief because it was a difficult fight. Craig's a very, very good, was a very, very good fighter at the time. Yes, had a, a loss on his record, but uh, extremely tough fight for me. I remember when he, I sparred him once, um, probably a year before that fight. Um, and Shane said, I said, oh, I, 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 I'll, I'll take that fight with him. Like, I felt all right in there with his six rounds. And Shane goes, I don't know, he's, he's, a, he's a good kid, like strong, physical, <coughs> can punch. And then, yeah, obviously we took it and, and got a decision. And then, yeah, since then, just consistent work. Um, Shane's got to be the hardest working coach. He just non-stop pad work in the gym every day. And then he watches fights, you know breaks people down but does it in a in such an, an easy way and, and and just you know the way he coaches is, is is like no other everyone no one really does anything the same like you wouldn't look at me and go oh oh yeah I remember when Ellie did that or Caroline did that and Adam did that or Adam does this like Chris or Craig does this like Ellie or Ellie does this like Craig or whatever you know and <coughs> it's just he just adapts to every fighter and he understands every fighter is different and he uses their their pot their you know their strengths and um, works on their weaknesses and, and minimizes them or doesn't you know minimizes the mistakes and things like that and that's just what Shane's like and um yeah uh, t- today was was very much his game plan um and I was just like okay let's let's do this I I wouldn't say I've ever followed a game plan of Shane's <coughs> that well a few things come out from stuff we worked on in camp but I really got him to sit me down and talk me through it today and I feel like I really feel like I did did a very good job of that and uh makes me very proud because you know I, I want to please Shane he, he's put in so much work for me he gave me an opportunity created a phenomenal life for me him, him and his whole family have and the least I can do is <laughs> listen to his, his game plans as as uh obviously he got coach of the year last year and um trainer of the year so 
yeah, the least I should do is, is listen to his game plans. But uh, yeah, a great relationship, just putting so much work together. Obviously, outside the ring as well, we 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 have a, a great relationship, and um, yeah, it's amazing. Very lucky to have that as a as a professional relationship, but also a personal relationship too. Okay, well, final words I'm going to leave to you, um, Chris Billum Smith, rather than the WBO Cruiserweight Champion, although you are both still. Um, but for now, just Chris Billum Smith and not the WBO Cruiserweight Champion. What's next? Uh, your beloved wife Mia is um, is asleep, probably. Um, hopefully, Frank, your son is asleep as well. Uh, or shout out to the Hello. shout out to the babysitter if not. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's getting there. Um, what next for you? I mean, you've you've just mentioned there, kind of, you touched on it in a microcosm about this this amazing life that you've built. You're, you know, the hardest man in Bournemouth and indeed the world. Um, <laughs> you have a you have a lovely family. You you've kind of. You know, it seems, from my perspective, Chris, that you're living it. You're living life. It couldn't really be going much better. Just how does that make you feel? Yeah, it's mad. Like, I've been on such a journey the last two years. Obviously, Frank being born, like, one, winning the McCarthy second fight, Frank being born, um, you know, the, the Chamberlain fight and all this, like, s- new sort of headline slot on the sky and... Then obviously the world title, me and Mia and Frank and just I don't know, I'm just so lucky. I don't know don't know what I've done to deserve it, but um yeah, I've just amazing, amazing life and so grateful for it and you know, long may I continue, there'll be hard roads ahead, but uh whilst you know, whilst the sun is shining I will definitely be uh enjoying it, that's for sure. Okay, well, Chris Billumsworth, now talking to Chris Billumsworth and the WBO Cruiserweight Champion of the World. Congratulations on successfully defending your world title. Uh, very, very impressive performance. Um, it's m- miraculous that you can box so disciplined yet still look like you've been hit by a baseball bat. Um, but nevertheless, yeah, nevertheless, a brilliant night um, at Selhurst Park. Congratulations. Thank you, as always, for speaking to me and Boxing News. I wish you all the best and we'll catch up very, very soon. Awesome. Thank you, Rob. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it.